HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have the latest in Hiller Sports. We'll take you to the Martin Luther King Junior Day festivities in Hopkinton. And Matt Clark will get you up to date with the latest HCAM programming with our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. On January 9th, the Massachusetts Department of Transportation conducted a public hearing regarding the downtown corridor project. The current total estimated uh, construction cost, engineer's estimate, is six million, approximately $6,400,000. This does not include any right-of-way acquisition costs. Right now, the design is expected to be completed in late summer 2019. Construction is expected to be completed approximately 18 months after the start of construction. Residents then had a chance to address concerns or ask questions. You can view the full public hearing on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV. Jesse McCarthy was selected as the newest member of the Hopkinton Public Library team. She will take over the adult services librarian role for the now director of the Hopkinton Public Library, Heather Backman. This picture was shared on Twitter of the Hopkinton High School robotics team after they won the Robotics Education and Competition Foundation Tournament. One of the many ways in which students gave back to the community on MLK Day is by beautifying the women's bathroom at Hopkinton Middle School during the Martin Luther King Junior Day of Service all throughout the bathroom, there is nice designs and words of encouragement. On Monday, January 22nd at 7 p.m., you'll be able to view the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting live on HCAM. Topics include the Chamberlain Street Wayland Road public hearing, plus the continued public hearing of the Whisper Ridge Open Space Landscape Preservation Development and Flexible Community Development Social Permits for 20th Century Homes. View the Planning Board meeting live on HCAM TV or online at hcam.tv slash live Monday, January 22nd at 7 p.m. The Hiller winter sports season is about midway through and there are many Hiller teams eyeing a playoff spot. Here is a look at how the Hiller sports teams are doing so far this season. Wednesday, January 10th, Hiller's hockey taking on Dedham, and the offense was just unstoppable. And, and the one thing I look for with this Dedham team is they've had a couple of great games against very good opponents. Did they discover something about themselves to make them better overall? We'll see. And that's a goal by the Hillers. Look at that. Just like that. Nice pass. Will ja Abbott. Jacob Weinstock to Will Abbott. And the Hiller is up 1-0. Famous doing battle with David Long on the boards. Up the near side is Will Abbott. Here comes Abbott on a quick break. One on two. Gets around the defenders and puts it. Stick side for the goal. Will Abbott showing off the fancy footwork and the fancy stick work and makes it 2 to nothing Hillers. Sloan in the slot, and he puts it in for the Hillers. DJ Sloan saw the open opportunity, and he got that one right by Stam, and it's three to nothing with 13.44 left to go in the second period. Here comes DJ Sloan now. Sloan trying to get around the defender, looking for the shot here. The backhander, and it's a goal. DJ Sloan making it four to nothing, Hillers. There's no substitution for speed. I mean, that was just all pure speed by Sloan. 
that I'm making a substitution. Actually, they just uh, sent Andrew Mercury to the penalty box. So Hillers with the nice advantage, play. and they take immediate advantage of it. Owen oh, Delaney on the one-timer. Will Abbott with a nice play, taking the puck out from behind the net, center it right to Delaney. Picked up by Lindquist. Lindquist turns it away. An opportunity here. Simos looking for the shot, and he's going to put a goal in. A beauty of a pass by Lindquist, and Steven Simos knocks in the sixth Hiller's goal of the evening. Just a nice look by Lindquist. He, right before he got that puck, he turned around and saw Simos breaking up. Hit him perfectly. Strike. Simos up to Lindquist. Leaves it for Abbott. Here comes Owen Delaney. Delaney with the wrister, and he puts it in. 7-0 Hillers, an easy goal for Owen Delaney. He just made that one look so easy, Eric. Just great passing. He set him up, have him come right down the middle, and he's got one of the best wrist shots on the team. On the end board, Temple trying to get to it. Sam Bloom picks it up for the Marauders. Top of the left circle, looking for the shot here. The wrister, and that's a goal! Tommy Hamlet. Tommy Hamlet making it 8 nothing, Hillers. A beauty of a shot by Hamlet. The Hillers grabbed the 8 nothing win over Dedham and kept the winning trend going as they grabbed a road win versus Medway on Saturday, January 13th, 5-3. And then they took down Westwood on the road on Wednesday, January 17th, 4-1. Hopkinton Hillers Boys Varsity Hockey now has eight wins, one loss, and one tie on the season. Hopkinton Hillers boys basketball has four wins and six losses on the season. They recently came up with a couple of huge wins. On Friday, January 5th, they took down Medfield 65 to 57. They lost in overtime against Bellingham on January 12th, 69 to 64, but took down Ashland on Tuesday, January 16th, 66 to 37. Hopkinton Hiller girls basketball has eight wins and two losses at the halfway point of the winter season. The Hiller girls were riding a four-game win streak into a January 16th meeting with Ashland. The Clockers took a 39-36 comeback win over Hopkinton. In swimming, the Hiller girls are a perfect 6-0, while the boys are 6-2. On January 10th, the boys and girls swim team defeated Dover Sherborne in a co-ed meet, 92-86. The boys lost a close one on January 15th versus Natick, 94-84. Some other Hiller sports notes. The wrestling team has four wins, three losses, and a tie on the season. The Dover Sherborne Hopkinton girls varsity hockey team currently has two wins and eight losses. The Hiller boys indoor track team is four and one, and the girls indoor track team is five and zero oh on the season. Coming up next on HCAM News, we will take you to the many Martin Luther King Jr. Day festivities in Hopkinton from this past Monday, and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider, plus a whole lot more you won't want to miss. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and healthcare services. Hi, my name is Margie Wigan, and I want to invite you to join me for my new show, Character Matters, on HCAM. We're going to talk about why do people choose the behavior that they choose? Why do they choose to be good? We're going to hear from people in history. We're going to hear from local heroes who make great choices. And we're going to hear from some puppets who talk about things they've seen. And they're going to say, what? Did you see that? Yes, I did. Please join us. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. 
Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. Welcome back to HKM News. The Hopkinton Youth Commission hosted their annual Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service. The event featured many activities to help those in need and to learn about what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was all about. Here is an in-depth look at this year's event. As part of the Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service activities, volunteers helped make scarves, blankets, hats, and other clothing items for donation at St. John's Parish. Today we have the St. John's Middle School Youth Group working on three different service projects. The first, which is happening in this room, is to make um, blankets for babies. Every baby that gets baptized here at St. John's receives a blanket um, for the, after their baptism, so that's what these will go to. Then in another room, we have children knitting uh, little hats for infants, and we're going to be giving them to a group in Framingham called Birthright, and they help um, women, particularly unwed mothers, who do decide to have their baby and keep it, get um, the proper education they need, proper all the supplies for a baby, so all those babies will, that's where we'll donate these hats. And then the third activity that we have going on right now are to create scarves, and those scarves next weekend, our high school um, youth group will be going into Boston to distribute blessing bags to different homeless people. So the scarves will go in that bag, along with other things we've collected, socks, mittens, toothpaste, toothbrush, and things like that. So those are the three projects we have here today. A wide array of activities took place during the Martin Luther King Jr. Day at Hopkinton Middle School. In addition to a few presentations, Volunteer community members, scouts, and students helped give back to those in need. These kids are decorating bags and filling them with gifts and then making a card for people who have cancer. And um, what are some of the things that they have put in the bags? Um, so the bags have fuzzy socks and activity books and like lotion and chapstick and soap and things like that. making dog toys for Bay Path. Oh, very nice. Here in Hopkinton. And um, did you get a lot of dog to toys made today? Yes, we did. Very good. Is there a lot of people that have come over and helped participate? Yes, there have been, yeah. Excellent. You having a good time? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. What are your names? Karen. Sophie. Karen and Sophie. Bella. Bella. And Vishnu. All right. Are you all in the scouts or are you all volunteering? I'm in I'm in a cadets. Okay, very good. I think she's in cadets. I don't know. So what, what are you doing here today to help We're selling, we're selling, we're selling pizza. pizza. We sell, we're selling pizza for free. Um, for free. We're not selling it. We're just well, yeah, giving it we're away. We're just giving it out. Yeah. We're giving pizza away. Oh, very nice. Are we going to be on the views or something? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just are you helping out too? Are you volunteering? No, I'm the manager. You're what? He's the manager. I'm the manager. Oh, you're the manager. I got here first. Oh, you're the big boss, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got here first. All right. CEO well. and big boss. Well, nice job. I'm sure everyone's going to enjoy the pizza that you've given out today. Thank you. I want to take some time to thank my partners on the Youth Commission. My name is Tamoria Saba. I'm the chair. And this is my wonderful team. And we've spent a lot of time trying to put together an amazing day for you all. And we hope you have a lot of fun. We'd like to thank you for making it a day on and not off. Today, we volunteer our time here and in other places in Hopkinton where we can make a difference in the lives of people who need it the most. By joining us today, we hope you realize that volunteering is important, but it also can be fun. It doesn't have to feel like a chore. And any contribution you make is wonderful. It's gratifying, and it brings us all closer together. 
We have a special guest for all of you this morning, an incredible storyteller of African and African-American culture. Her name is Valerie Tutson. When I was seven and a half, we didn't have a national holiday honoring Dr. King. So my community, my little community, which by the way was kind of like Hopkinton, we did not have a lot of black people in the town where I was growing up. We had five black families. That's it. But even though there was no national holiday, my little community, the few black folks that lived there and many of the white folks who had experienced the powerful work of the civil rights movement would gather in my home church, the First Congregational Church of New Milford, and they would hold a celebration honoring Dr. King. Former Buddhist monk Seth Monk presented a workshop called Seeds of Peace. Somebody comes to you and maybe they're really excited. Maybe some of you have had that experience. Somebody comes and they're really excited and they're talking really fast and oh my God, everything's wrong. And, oh. Yeah. And if you react to them in that world, it's going to just keep going and get faster and faster and faster. But if you react to them with and then you listen to them, you create kind of this space, it also allows the other people to start to settle down. So do you, uh, we're volunteers with the Hopkins Youth Thank Commission, you. helping out the Red Cross today, checking people in, and it's very simple. Uh, you could actually go to the Red Cross website and uh, register online, but if you come in here, there's just a short form to fill out and uh, wait your turn, probably 15 minute wait. And then it's a 15-minute process to, you know, draw your blood, and they ask you some questions about any, you know, diseases or foreign countries you've traveled to recently to make sure that you're a good candidate. Welcome to the Shaking Blood Drive. <laughs> right. And now I'd like to welcome our guest speaker, Tazwar Ferdus. My realization of this and my newfound inspiration to continue Diversity Club was because of certain issues that affected me personally, as well as issues I heard in, here in the high school. These issues all revolved around discrimination. I didn't start Diversity Club with the intention of attacking a problem. The club was an outlet for me to improve my community through something I was passionate about. But due to the unfortunate circumstances that have afflicted our minorities in this community, I realized how important it was to continue Diversity Club and its activism for equality and acceptance. To close out the MLK Day of Service, Hopkinton Youth Strings Orchestra and Boston's Jewish Community Choir perform. <laughs> tied together in the single garment of destiny, caught in an inescapable network of mutuality. And whatever affects one directly affects all directly. This is my first year as chair of the Youth Commission, and um, I was just really excited uh, at how the community responded to the event. We added a lot of new elements this year that have never been done before, including having an African-American storyteller, a choir, and actually giving a student the opportunity to be our guest speaker. So it was really exciting to involve so many different facets of people in the day, and I think the community responded well to it. 
A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is HCAM's Promotions Coordinator, Matt Clark. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, January 19th at 5 p.m., musical duo Junko Ogawa and Rick Goggin share their uniquely combined music on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. And at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers girls basketball team takes on the Holliston Panthers, live on HCAM Ed. On Monday, January 22nd at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers girls basketball team takes on the Foxborough Warriors, live on HCAM Ed. And also at 6.30 p.m., Dr. Kathy McLeod talks with members of the Hopkinton School Committee on a brand new episode of Highlights from the Hill. And at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, January 23rd at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers boys basketball team takes on the Medway Mustangs, live on HCAM Ed. And at 8.30 p.m., the town gathers to discuss the upcoming Main Street renovations on a brand new HCAM TV special. On Wednesday, January 24th at 7 p.m., Margie and Lisa are back and invite you to join the conversation on a new episode of The Margie and Lisa Show, live on HCAM TV. And on Friday, January 26th at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers boys basketball team takes on the Norton Lancers, live on HCAM Ed. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website to view the full broadcast of the Martin Luther King Jr. Day event in Hopkinton and the latest happenings throughout our community. If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. The school committee held a special meeting Monday night. Topics included the budget and voting for the next Hopkinton school superintendent to take over for the retiring Dr. Kathy McLeod. The new superintendent will officially start on July 1st, 2018. That this is somebody that, that the staff members in the district really have bought into as a leader and where we are as a district right now, I think one of the things that we need to be cognizant of is we have a very, very talented leadership team and we want to keep as many of them as possible. And so that was really powerful for me as well. I've really, with the exception of Mary Colombo, who I also had the pleasure of working with, I have never seen anyone so, um, so enamored of and conversant in MCAS data and all data. I mean, she just, for an English person, particularly Jen, as you said, her, her ability to um, use data to inform what, what we're doing is really exceptional. So and the selection for the new superintendent was current Hopkinton assistant superintendent, Dr. Carol Cavanaugh. Okay, all in favor? Yes. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Okay. Thank you very much. The Tenando Hopkinton Hillers took on the Tenando Melrose Red Raiders in the Division Four State Semifinals. Two minutes, 2.45 left. Heller in the shotgun, back to throw, he has time. 
going deep, wide, wide open. open for Will Abbott. He's going to take it in for a touchdown for the Hillers. Here we go, Hawkinson gambling early here in this game. Going for two. Kelleher under center. Hands it to Abbott who throws a pop pass in the end zone. And that is going to be caught by, looks like, Linquist. That was Linquist. And the gamble pays off for the Hillers and they take an 8-7 lead. Hillers remained up 8-7 at the half. The Melrose offense put together another long drive to start the third quarter. A little bit of a different formation here as Stan goes under center. He gives it to uh, Seed who bounces left and he is into the end zone. Here we go for the extra point. The handoff is to Seed. He takes it straight into the end zone, almost untouched with the two-point conversion. Then later in the quarter, Isaac Seed finds a big hole in the Hopkinton defense. Kind of like Doherty. He was. Here we go, Melrose, handoff to Seed, and he breaks one. And he's off to the races, Don. He's going to take it in for the score. Wow. Melrose never looked back after the two third quarter touchdowns. The game would end by a final score of 22 to 8. serve to the back row. They go back set to Wang. And that's it. Wang with the uh, thunderous kill and now mobbed by the team. <laughs> so Newton North takes the third set, 25-23 for a 3-0 sweep of the Hillers. Congratulations to Newton North. And congratulations to the Hillers too. I mean, it was a phenomenal season. Yeah, it really was. They got nothing to be ashamed about. I know this one hurts. I know it's heartbreaking. There's nothing worse than losing a division, uh, one state cha or any state championship, rather. Yep. But they have uh, everything to be proud of. They really had a tremendous season and so much talent on this team. What a job Coach Grabmeyer did. Necessary ingredients for our perfect library. Dedicated patrons, our amazing staff, and now this fantastic building. So, libraries are the cornerstone to a free society of well-educated citizens. The spirit of that is captured in the words of author Toby Forward. Civilized nations build libraries. Lands that have lost their soul close them down. To the friends of the library, the staff, and town officials, this new building is a collaboration of the community. It not only takes a village to build a library, but a lot of support. And you've got that support from the citizens and taxpayers and those that tear up the fundraisers, who along with the state provided the funding. Absolutely nothing makes the Mass Board of Library Commissioners happier than awarding a construction grant.